A few months ago, I have created a, a video that is comparing QuickBooks to Zobooks, and I got lots of uh, attentions from this video. Uh, I invited Simon to join us today. Simon is an amazing accountant, and he knows both QuickBooks and Zobooks inside out. And I like to bring Simon to this conversation and we'll see if QuickBooks or Zobooks. Uh, just one request before we start. It needs to be an honest and non-biased non conversation. I don't want you to be for Zo or for QuickBooks. We'll let the audience decide, you know, which system is good for them. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So Simon, can you present yourself? <clears throat> yeah, of course. So my name is Simon. Uh, I've been in the accounting field for almost 10 years now. I've, uh, I've worked with many, many different systems, starting from Blue Link, going all the way to SAP, going back to cloud-based accounting softwares like QuickBooks, FreshBooks, Sage, Zoho. So I've used essentially most of the accounting systems that are out there. Um, and it, it depends on the company size. So I've, I've worked with companies that are family owned, that are small, that um, that's where my career started. And then I've worked for big companies, big blockchain companies like Red Bull, um, alcohol beverage company at the moment. Um, so it's, it's the experience using accounting software and system really varies depending on the usage, how big the company is, what the industry is like. And um, yeah, so. Just, all over just the place. for the sake of, of transparency, Simon is managing my books uh, for all my companies. And he also was the only one that was able to migrate me from QuickBooks to Zoho Books. Uh, yeah. the, the video that I created before was about that I, I was not able to move from QuickBooks to Zoho Books, and Simon did it in three days. So, Simon, let's begin with the the most basic question, in what fields QuickBooks will shine and what quick uh, fields Zoho Books will shine? Yeah, it all, it all comes down to the end user. I think that with most systems where, where you're starting to use it from scratch, it all depends on the business owner. So the business owner's ability to learn a new system and to migrate and adapt to new ways of doing things. Um, QuickBooks, the great thing about it was it's, it's a really, really simple to use, very user-friendly, very colorful um, platform where everything is beautiful. And yeah. it goes from A to Z, it gets everything done in between. There are no hiccups. They rarely have any errors or issues with their system or integration within the system. So right. when you're doing postings, when you're doing invoices, when you're doing anything like that, their sales tax returns for almost anywhere around the world works very, very well. Everything reconciles perfectly. The banking module is great. Um, but again, when you're comparing certain platforms, there are pros and cons to every single one of them. So it all comes down to the business user, yeah. There is one thing with QuickBooks that really, really, really bugs me. There are no backups. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That's, that's totally insane. When, when I lost, uh, I think it was in 2016, uh, we had a very interesting bookkeeper that, that, that deleted lots of transactions. And when I called QuickBooks, they said that there are no backups. And a few weeks ago, a friend of mine that you also know this person, he also lost data and he called QuickBooks and still there are no backups. How can it be? It doesn't yeah, make sense. It's, it's crazy. I don't know. Uh, one of the systems that, well, when, when QuickBooks works on their accounting software, their main platform works in live mode. Whereas there are some systems out there that do daily backups to servers and, you know, offsite servers or onsite servers, right. um, QuickBooks online. And I, I have no idea what the reason for that was. They translated from that old way of doing things into the new, but again, it's not necessarily convenient for certain people and clients, right? Where they do need to have right. access to certain entries. And sometimes people do make really, really material errors, right? So, yeah. I, I saw many of them. Yeah. So it depends, but, um, one of the great things that QuickBooks has from like a platform perspective is you do have the audit log. So the audit log is really, really good and it's, it's solid. But the right. unfortunate part about the audit log in QuickBooks is it doesn't show it based off of the module that you're running in. It's just a generic platform with just all the entries in there. Whereas 
something Wait. like Zoho or SAP. So you cannot go to specific category? You see everything? <laughs> You can search it, but it doesn't, it doesn't give too much information. You'd have to open up specific ones to find what transactions it relates to. Whereas if you go to Zoho, you can open specific modules and see what the history was between those modules. So you can go to a customer or go to an old invoice and see exactly what every step of the process happened. And if there's automation integrated, it even shows that there. So, are, there any, are there any automations with QuickBooks? I never um, found any automation there, like except like basic stuff, uh, recurring invoices or recurring payments. Yeah, um, and even those functions, some of them are fairly restrictive. I mean, you can do a recurring invoice, but you can't charge the client for the invoice. I mean, this is the Canadian version, but right. you, whereas something like Zoho has the option to invoice somebody, invoice and charge the card automatically, like certain small things that just help the customer right. Uh, sorry, the actual uh, business owner to save a lot of time down the road and avoid mistakes too, right? Like you, you tend to forget to do certain things, especially as a busy business owner. Accounting is one of those things that is left behind to the end of the month or the end of the year. Right. So it's Hopefully not, it's but yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so if, if I get you right, QuickBooks will win in their uh, user interface, the ease of use, and uh, the stream of work, that everything is flawless, working perfectly. Am I correct? Yeah, one of the, uh, if we're comparing, let's just do a quick breakdown. We're gonna go into a couple of pros and cons of each system. I think that's okay. really helpful for certain individuals to understand because some companies benefit from specific functions in accounting software and some don't. Um, right. Companies that need automation benefit greatly from it. So one of the, toughest parts about QuickBooks is the close ended system. So there's no access to coding, no access to integration, no access to modification. You can integrate with external softwares, but then it gets quite expensive. So you can integrate with receipt bank. You can integrate with other platforms like different timesheet tracking platforms, but it's kind of a headache because you, you need to keep integrating. You're using different companies, different platforms. You're paying for it's different subscriptions. It's also expensive, right? You need exactly. to have different subscriptions. So you end up yeah. from $40 a month to $300 a month. Exactly. And yeah. I mean, the payroll function is really great in uh, QuickBooks for both the mm -hmm. US and Canada. It's fantastic. Um, yep. But one of the greatest things that we need to compare is functionality. And I mean, I'm an accountant, so I know how these things work and I know the intricacies, especially when you're dealing with a lot of transactions. Right. The greatest and most important thing is having a decent chart of accounts. The chart of accounts is essentially the backbone to the business from a financial perspective. So when you're comparing the two systems in that sense, QuickBooks has a chart of accounts, but it's fairly open ended. So you can enter and adjust and do different transactions from different functions and modules like the banking module mm -hmm. directly to the chart of accounts without any sort of limitation or ruling. Whereas a company like, or a program like Zoho, you can do these entries, but everything is limited to the setup of each general ledger account. So each GL is mm -hmm. specifically integrated to a point where you can't post from a bank as an expense to another bank or to another credit card. Um, and it just eliminates a lot of errors for, you know, people. So, in the so, so that's an upside for Zo or a disadvantage? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it an, it's a definite upside. Because they're caging you in a special exactly. environment that you cannot make mistakes. Exactly. It, it, it puts specific general ledger accounts into mm -hmm. specific codes that cannot be used for other functions. So you can't accidentally adjust the sale with an expense posting, but you can do that in QuickBooks. So you can do the adjustments nice and easy. One of the other things that are really, really nice with Zoho is that they have a hard close. A hard what close is, is a, a hard close. It's essentially where the system locks a specific period once um, an entry or a function is triggered. So when you're doing a sales tax closing for a specific period, yep. um, QuickBooks will still allow you to edit the past transactions. They just give you a nice little warning in the, before you do it. Whereas with Zoho, they say you can't edit any of these because they've already been submitted. Uh, from a record keeping perspective, this is very nice because it keeps the entire system holistic and clean and right. ready for an audit. If there's an audit, it's harder to track things. And this ties into that whole um, backup side of things. It's very hard to track things when you don't have um, specific, like a workflow where it says you've done ABC. So with Zoho, it's 
system shuts down, you have to create extra adjustments, which is the proper way of doing, you know, keeping up with your records. Um, so just another couple of small positive things there. I mean, you obviously have the integration of multi-currencies much better in Zoho. Um, QuickBooks has a great multi-currency system, but it does have a couple of glitches when you're doing certain transactions from certain bank accounts. And it has some limitations with automation, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, I in know terms also, of, you know, yeah. Also one thing that I know that uh, I had with uh, QuickBooks, I collect money from PayPal using mm -hmm. USD. When the money is coming to my account, uh, if you remember, we had problems to reconcile it because PayPal is not really integrated. It's just a bank account and mm -hmm. the commission is part of the transaction itself. So if I got paid $1,000, my bank account got 956, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. QuickBooks don't know how to calculate those commissions. And now we need to have some manual intervention to reconcile the transaction. And it's when you have so many transactions, it's just horrible. Right. But so books, it's just doing it automatically. They put the, the entire amount into uh, a special account and they know how, how to calculate the commission. So it's transparent from my side. Yeah, exactly. And one of those things is just, you know, those suspense accounts, they're very useful. Uh, right, big, right. Big programs, they use suspense accounts for everything. Work in progress, inventory suspense, in transit suspenses, you know, fixed assets, suspense accounts, liability. It's, the list goes on. I mean, when you're dealing with so many transactions, and again, it's all about scalability, right? At right. the end of the day, you want your business to grow. If you're growing with a system that's limited, but does what it can do today, you have to think about three to five years ahead. Most right. of these massive companies don't stick with small platforms because they know how much they need to input in terms of money to be able to expand their business. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a really, really good point. I mean, just in general, this whole multi-currency thing is very, it's tough in general because when you're doing multi-currency, you're running a system that will do even the subledger account. So a subledger account yep. is accounts receivable, inventory, any of those accounts that can be tracked you know, off the main general ledger. Um, these need to be kept in line, especially when you're dealing with Canadian USD currencies, you know, the pound, uh, you know, in the EU as well. Like it's, it's all very, very hard to maintain if you don't have a proper system that keeps track of it. This is where most of the yeah. errors come from in terms of glitches in other softwares is FX adjustments of so foreign currency adjustments and just reconciling transactions. And like you said, when the money comes into the bank account and you don't know where it came from or you can't, really link it directly. There's just, it's a lot of room for error. Yeah, with, with Zo, so, so let's say that, uh, let's say in my business, I have a specific packages that I'm selling. Let's say 995 mm -hmm. will be a package. End of the month, I have, let's say 50 of them. I have no idea who bought what, like which client, and now it's becoming a mess. But when we move to Zo books, because the initiation is from the CRM, the CRM is connecting to Zoho Books invoice. Whenever it's reconciled, I know exactly that transaction ABC related to specific client and it's all being matched. When in QuickBooks, I had to go specifically one by one just to make sure which client paid and which client didn't pay. Mm -hmm. it, it was very painful. So the integration between CRM and books, making it so, so much easier for me as a business owner. So the, the pain level went down dramatically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it's night and day because from an outer perspective, you can always say, you know what, I will keep track of it. I will do it every two weeks, but it takes time. There's a percentage risk of beta where you're going to make mistakes. If you don't have somebody professional on the account who's going to do the reconciliations properly, you're going to run into a lot of problems. And when these problems accumulate and you're half a year down the road, and you're trying to reconcile and close the quarter. Oh my God. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Look, we, what I really miss about, because I don't have any more accounts on QuickBooks. So I migrated all of them to, to Zobooks, but I, I miss the design. When you log into QuickBooks, it's fun. 
you, you want to click and work on the system. With Zoho Books, I cannot say the same. It's a, it's, it looks like old fashioned system, but from the other side, the functionality wise, I cannot even dream of going backwards to, to, to QuickBooks. It's totally night and day. Uh, again, this is my feeling as a business owner. Yeah. If you're looking at most systems, when you're getting to more serious systems, they're not user, like they're not pretty. They're not, they're not beautiful, Sage. you know? Sage, SAP, yeah. 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 And Oracle, for example, like they're all very square boxes. Everything is modules are one by one, but one of the good functionalities of QuickBooks as well that you have to give credit to is the reporting and the customization of reporting. Because what, what's from, the difference between those two? So if, if we look at it from a thousand feet, uh, mm -hmm. QuickBooks, where you just log in and do reporting, you can customize it based off of accounts, based off of periods, based off of access, custom fields, all those little things are nice and easy and you can customize them right away. Okay. With Google Books, you have the same functionality, you do. And if you can even have more, but here's the kicker. With Zoho Books, you can do some of the, you know, breaking down and customization of reports. But if you want to take reporting to the next level, you have to use analytics. So it's that's a right. That's fantastic, right. fantastic platform that works really well and integrates really well. And by the way, the really cool thing about that one is it can pull from different databases, offline, online, QuickBooks, that's right. different drives. It's, it's very versatile. But like you said, right. from a system where you just log in, click one button, you got a couple of reports. QuickBooks is great, but when so you the, want to take that business to the next level, then you go. The, the reports that I am using, I have a business intelligence, uh, business intelligence uh, developer that is grabbing all the information from my CRM, from Zoho Books, is just digesting all the information. And based on that, I can see on which products I am wasting more time and there is not enough profit, which... Uh, you know, projects are winners and losers. You know, so for me, Zoho Analytics is it's it's the tool that's making all those numbers is something very uh, juicy because yeah. I can actually take action based on the data. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you. Absolutely. I mean, especially when when you're dealing with so many numbers and you're trying to think about the business in the future, that's really where you can use these functions. And again, right. QuickBooks has the cash flow. It's got a little cash report. It's got the balance sheet and all those other beautiful reports that I call beautiful, obviously. Right. But when you're going into specific reporting and you're thinking about the future, you have to start thinking seriously. And um, even though the face front of the actual platform in Zoho Books is not the same, yeah. the abilities and the, I mean, we haven't, I don't even think we discussed the automation side of it in terms of the ability yep. to code custom functions. Can you share not like the, the, the specifics about the clients, of course, but just the eye level of how Zoho Books automations were helping you produce results that QuickBooks was not able to? Yeah, so it ties into the same exact um, topic that we discussed earlier with the amount of openness in the system. So with Zoho Books, you can look at different modules and see what the codes are for specific areas. So for specific fields, custom fields, different you know, areas in the system, and you can give different commands. Whereas in QuickBooks, you don't know what the invoice field is from an API perspective, let's say. Mm -hmm. So you can't really do any coding and it's not an open system. So you can take specific functions in Zoho and take mm -hmm. them to the next level, add checks and balances, reminders. Um, and it all is based off of different, I guess it's algorithmic um, decisions and processes that will trigger once a specific item happens. So it's all about actions and workflows and doing different codes that can integrate all the platforms together. So, and with that being said, you can have CRM integrations with books and the two systems can speak to each other and right. you can have different, you know, specific custom fields that will integrate between the two platforms and be able to generate certain information nodes. So, one could be um, adding interest to an invoice on a specific date and then sending a reminder automatically. Those things are crazy because they, if you're talking about SAP automation for that specific mm -hmm. sort of topic, you're talking about thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars right. for an auto automation. Like it's, it's crazy. 
you look at anything right now for big companies that do this sort of thing, it costs them an arm and a leg and it's upkeep and you have to maintain it and the codes change. It's very impressive. I think from just from like an outsider view, um, yep. the Zoho automation is really, really impressive. For me, for example, I am running all my projects on Zoho projects. Whenever the project uh, is running, my employees will log hours into Zoho projects. With the click of a button, the timesheets are being converted from Zoho books to Zoho, sorry, from Zoho projects. They're being converted, converted to Zoho books into invoices, which is totally insane, right? It's a click of a button. My uh, Zoho CRM system is connected as well to Zoho books. So whenever I have a project, I will enter the number of hours, for example, or n amount of money in the deal of Zoho CRM. I will click a button and then it will generate automatically an invoice or a retainer invoice, exactly. depending on the needs, on Zoho CRM. Uh, sorry, Zoho Books. And it's all connected. So I, it's, it's just crazy the the level of integration that everything is under one roof, like ZO one, that you know you're able to produce such results from you know five clicks, and it, it's just amazing the, the amount yeah, of time. Yeah, it's incredible. That you're yeah. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. You can't even compare. I mean, uh, just integrations, and you have so much that you can work with. It's crazy. Projects, CRM, the signing, yeah. the expense yeah. supporting Even ZO bookings. You know, you're, yeah. char you're charging on a meeting or using Zoho bookings and it's in Zoho. Yeah. yeah. If you think about just, just from a number perspective, sorry, Lior, the, yeah. if you just think about expense reporting for a business that has, let's say five to 10 employees, and this can be 20, 30, 40, 50, hundred employees too, mm -hmm. but expense reporting for a big company, usually they use expense it, concur, all these big platforms. Again, concur is owned by SAP now. Okay. Those platforms cost about five to seven dollars an expense report, and they cost a lot of money to integrate. You can't do single integration with SAP unless you have a like a third party company that does the integration for you every single month in the upkeep. So you either do an upload, which is through Excel or CSV to SAP. Mm -hmm. So you got a it's, it's very expensive. B, there's a lot of room for error. C, it's another outsider platform that you're using and relying on, right? Because right. you have your standalone and then you have your expense reporting platform. Yep. So you have all these logins, all of this stuff. Whereas with Zoho One, you got the expense side of it. You got this. Right. It's, just, it's just easier. How difficult is to, is to install and configure Zoho Expense? Because I know that many companies want to use Zoho Expense, but they're afraid that it's, it's just too difficult to deal with. If you get a company that's reliable and you install and do the entire, you know, uh, phase one, phase two integration and just simple setup, it shouldn't take too long. I mean, it's all about who you're working with at the end of the day, because you can have anybody do it, but it just takes time and you need to be a professional to understand it. You need to code the, all the items in there have to be coded properly. Um, yeah, it's, it's not a tough task to do. It's just about actually doing it right. Because right. when you're doing an integration with concur, or another expense report system outside of the system, you still have to provide a GL. You still have to quote all the tax. You still have to right. quote all the expense accounts. All those things still take a long time and you're the one who has to do it. So right. it all depends on the business owner and what they want to do and how they want to take their business to the next level, really. But you're saying it's relatively easy to do. Yeah, extremely. Okay. Now, yeah. the, the biggest question, the $1 million question, most of the people that are watching this video right now they're asking themselves, how can I move from QuickBooks to Zobox? Is it a difficult process? Now I've been through the process, but I don't want to say anything. I want to ask you, how difficult is to migrate? Um, migrating it is it's fairly simple. I mean, when, there are two types of migrations. One of which is the typical opening balance and proper configuration of the account. So setting up the account properly with using a professional mm -hmm. and uploading the initial balances for a quarter end or a year end, for example. Okay. This is a very typical way to do it. Most companies do it this way because it's easier. Most accounting firms so, do so, it this so way. So you're just moving the balances, but you don't keep the history. Exactly. And when you're doing something like that, um, 
you're essentially just starting fresh from a new system, but you have to keep track of all your historical data because for Canada, right. you need to have the information for, you know, six plus years, including the, right. so it's four plus three or six years. Um, right. So when you're doing it this way, it's an easy upload. There's a lot of work that goes into actually configuring the account and setting it up properly. Because again, you're using two different systems that they have to work very well. And in order for you to keep the same kind of consistency and professionalism from one system to the other, the new system has to be set up properly. Now, I, I, yeah, I, I know, for example, in, in my case, the companies that try to, the accounting companies that try to migrate me, the problem was not when they try to create my Zoho books, that was perfect. The problem was that when we matched my QuickBooks, the, the bottom line uh, numbers for each account, and we matched it to Zoho books, the same time that we just created them, it was perfect, it was, there was a match. But when we started to work with money and connect bank accounts, everything went to hell. The numbers didn't match up. We started to have surplus in accounts, invoices that were not matched. It was a total nightmare. So, so I, I, I don't want to go into details, but how come you got it right and they didn't get it right? And they're so books professionals they are you not know, doing it for years how come you were yeah. able to get it right without without giving away too many secrets because it's a very very tough item to configure and to actually be able to populate if you go to any company that does accounting consulting they don't like to do historical upload a it's too much time to reconcile and test b it just, it's too much liability to be uploading so much historical data. It's just a right. lot of work. I mean, you're sometimes dealing with companies that have 3 million transactions in the span of two years. It's crazy. Right. I mean, that's minimum. When you're dealing with big companies, it's millions of transactions. Right. Um, when you're doing uploads, certain systems have limitations. So you can go backwards, you can do uploads, you can do closing periods, you can do... Um, Anyways, without going into too much detail, well, one of the most important things when you're doing a historical upload is to know how to use the information and to know the new system. Zoho has the functionality to be able to upload the historical data. You just need to know how to configure the information properly. It just takes a long time, but it's worth it. At the end of the day, the client will just have one platform where they can look everything up, right? So, 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 so I, 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 th I think I get it. In, in some cases, when I need to integrate two systems and I am successful when other implementers are failing, it will usually be because I know both systems inside out and the limitations, it's where I know where I'm going to fail. Exactly. So, by knowing this, so you're saying that because you know Zoho books and QuickBooks inside out, this is how you can grab the data and digest it in a way that they will match at the end of the process. Yeah, and it's about testing, right? Because our testing files, the, you, you can run so many testing files, they go for 30, 50 megabyte Excel files. They're crazy. They, they're so heavy that they're testing every single bit of the process. You're testing every single trial balance every quarter throughout the functioning years, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when you're doing the upload, you just have to make sure because a lot of people also tend to forget that when you're doing an initial upload, you have to make, take care of the sub, sub ledger accounts. Sub ledger accounts, I said before, were like accounts receivable, payables, inventory. All those items need to be broken up by the specific account. You can't just have an opening balance on the balance sheet of $1,000 in your accounts receivable. What are you applying against? When right. you get that money in the bank, you have to apply it against an invoice. That $1,000 needs to be broken out by the specific transactions, which are offset by the suspense accounts. So you need to know what you're doing. It's not just we're going to punch in some numbers. It's actual heavy, heavy work that requires some thinking. And most companies just don't have the patience to deal with that. Right. I, I tried myself before I contacted accounting firms, I tried myself to migrate to Zoho books multiple times. Mm -hmm. And that was painful. Uh, again, the, the beginning is always easy. You know, if you go to the uh, Zoho books migration guide, just click here, grab the, the, the account balances, post them. Exactly. 
but it never works. It never works because the balances eventually, you know, let's say that, that October 1st will be the cutoff. October 1st, I need to start grabbing into the system, the invoices. I need to feed back the banks into the accounts and everything goes to well. And it's, it's, it's a total nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. It's essentially, it's a checklist and a process list that have to work. And when you don't know what you're doing, it can cause a lot of headache. You can enter incorrect balances and then you run into audits and then you have no idea because three years ago you did an integration that, or a system transition that you just don't remember what you did. Right. Right. These numbers, they need to make sense. They need to be tested. At the end of the day, it's your baby. These companies, these important items, they're, they feed us, they do everything for us. Right. So right. you want to make sure that you take care of it and do the system transition. Right. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. So Simon, I think we digested the QuickBooks and Zoho books all the way. Um, guys, if you have any questions or you have any comments, drop them in the comments below. If you like the video, thumbs up is always, uh, you know, a good sign for me. And I really appreciate it. It will let me know that the content that we're generating is what you've been looking for. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, Simon, for, for joining this session. I really appreciate your time. Thanks thank for you having me. Much. Thank you, Lear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.